Recently, my wife had, oh, I don't know, a friend of hers die, and another friend called her up and told her about someone else who died, and another friend called her up and told her about one of her nieces or nephews or some relationship that's kind of distant from an in-law or something was dying and someone else called and <laughs> a friend and they're dying and I, I don't know you know if it's in the air or what it may be but death is a part of life and we all have different tolerances and abilities you know we're all given different gifts and ways in which we deal with them Jesus said that death, where is thy sting? You know, that he had conquered death. He had gone to the place where because of resurrection, we could have an expectation of living eternally with God. And we would not feel that sting of death, that terror, that fear, that angst from it. And I don't know about you, but <laughs> I took that literally. I just kind of don't react the same way most people do, you know, I mean, I know when my mother died, you know, I had a, a great challenge because when I first heard the news, you know, I was on the phone and I remember being at work and I was told, or I was driving and I was told by my sister that my mother had died and the shock of it had challenged me, you know, that I was thinking, oh, should I pull over? Should I stop? Should I be upset? And I kind of thought, oh no, I don't get to talk to her. And that was more of what I felt. And then later, I remember I was on my way to work, and so I worked that day. And uh, my first, I was on a company, I was working for a company that I was doing um, tech support, but I was doing also a lot of conversations on the phone and setting up uh, appointments and so as I started this cold call I couldn't open my mouth I had to force my way through it so I recognize that you know there are things and challenges that our body does that we don't do maybe in our soul and I remember until God had given me a, a, a vision of my mother in heaven I kind of felt bad about it you know my mother being dead and I didn't get a chance to talk to her and you know I kind of felt like oh wow I don't get to talk to her I didn't feel this other thing except the fact that I wanted to talk to her you know that was kind of what my relationship I guess with my mother was and I know that that was that was probably hard but you know when my grandmother died I didn't feel all that shook up there was a stranger one time that died I think it was uh, my grandfather who I never knew and that shook me up for some reason but other than that you know, when I faced death, I wasn't all shook up and worried. And You know, when I've heard of stories of people dying, I've been more kind of, yeah, that's part of our society and culture. Like 9-11 didn't faze me a bit. You know, I mean, I know, I know there's a lot of people that go, where were you on 9-11? I go, I don't know. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I mean, it, was, it wasn't that big a deal. I mean, yes, people died. Yes, they you know, great tragedy for America. But I kind of grew up in the Vietnam era, and it was kind of like, you know, we were all planning on dying in Vietnam because, you know, we were all being drafted. And I don't know. I grew up also during the generation that, you know, we used to drop the cover because the world was going to end and nuclear annihilation was going to happen. So I don't know if those things affected me, but when I got saved, suddenly I had no fear of death. For me personally, I kind of looked at it like, I'm not really afraid of dying, I'm just afraid of the pain. <laughs> I don't want to suffer. So, I don't know about you, but we should, as a culture and as a people, especially Christians, be more prepared for death than we are. I know I've read recently about you know, maybe Chuck Smith and Greg Laurie and different people that I, I looked up to and their reactions or actions towards death and not really so quite the way I thought they would have reacted, you know. And 
maybe that's okay, you know, maybe that's part of, you know, being different, you know, that some of us don't react, you know, to it the same way. Maybe some of us are called to be comforters to those that when they do encounter death, it just devastates them and wipes them out. And You know, I, I often tell people that to not plan your death is to not plan your life. So if you don't plan your life, then you haven't planned your death. And that you should do both. Because you're going to live past death. That's a fact of life. You need to get the realization that, of course, you're going to pass beyond this physical body. Of course that's true, that you're going to have an encounter with the living God. Prayerfully, I hope it would be by His mercy and grace He saves you, because if not, He condemns you and you will suffer eternal punishment for that. That sucks. That's called hell. And hell, as well as death and suffering and all that's going to be thrown into the lake of fire where eternal torment goes on continually. It's kind of like an existence of something that, you know, is all corrupted and it stays corrupted and it's just off, like, out there. Some place you don't want to be. And God is so serious about it that he warns us about it and tells us not to go there. And since death and hell are cast there, I kind of think that, you know, maybe as we grow in faith, maybe we should be fearing death less and more confident of eternal life more. In other words, if we live like we were going to live for eternity, wouldn't we plan out that a little bit more so? But if we're only living for this life, I think it becomes obvious by how we treat this life. Don't you? Are we seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness? So that not only all these things in this life would be added unto us, but that in eternity we would be planned out for continuing on with God. Seems like it to me. So. I don't know about you, but the subject of death really doesn't faze me much. It doesn't bother me. I don't think much about it. I talk about it a lot. I can. Separation of the spirit and the soul and the body. You know how the soul and the spirit are going to go to God and the body will be left from the dust from which you return and dust to dust and ashes to ashes and that which returns back to the dust is not that which you're going to inhabit, but that which you're going to inhabit is spirit so that this corruption will put on incorruption because the incorruptible cannot come from that which is corrupted and the earth is corrupted. So of that nature with which you have been put into a body by your spirit being born again of the spirit of God that has come down from heaven, then that corruption with which you have existed and lived in has to go back to the corruption with which the earth has been cursed. And so that's why you're going to get a new body, a spiritual body. See, we summed it all up in a nutshell. <laughs> How simple it was. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. I will ransom them from the power of thy grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plague, O grave. I will be thy destruction. As the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's kind of what I see a lot of people still hanging on to is this bondage of the fear of death that they don't really have to have because God has already removed that fear from them so that they can live a joyful, fulfilling, purpose-driven life that they can accomplish that which they're supposed to do in this life as well as move on into ages to ages life to come, experiencing God in a new and relevant way continually throughout the ages. God has promised that and I'm looking forward to it personally. I think that this is just like the grass fadeth and passes away and so are the days of man. But the eternity that we're going to experience with God, oh, that's so much more, so let's get on with it. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. You were dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, our, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. 
that is the hope of our calling, which isn't that to accomplish the purpose with which we were made, but rather to see that salvation that God is bringing to us, that we would know Him in eternity, so that death would have no power over us, but rather life, that life that God has given us, will shine brighter and brighter, even unto the day of salvation. So at the moment of our death, it's just a casting away of that which was left behind, so that we could shine like the stars in the heavens.